Hey everybody, it's me, Jake. And today I'm going to talk about why E3 just sucked this year, okay? So the first thing I need to talk about when it comes to E3 is, what were they thinking, okay? These companies are really out of touch with gamers, and I think E3 showed this. Because, let, let's talk about the big three consoles here first. So, I didn't even bother to watch Nintendo's, because Nintendo is just sad at this point. They're just running pre-recorded stuff, and it's, it's just a joke here. But let's talk about what Sony and Microsoft did. I'll talk about Nintendo later. So, Sony and Microsoft were both mostly a bunch of rapid follower trailers for games you could care less about. Like, um, for example, they, I mean, they did have a few good games there for some of them that were, of course, multi-plat, like Metro or uh, a new Monster Hunter game, which is definitely going to sell well. I mean, lots of anime nerds and that are going to buy Monster Hunter, but the thing is, with those games and whatnot is, one, they're multi-plat, and two, the whole, the whole streams were just rapid-fire trailers. And they weren't even trailers that showed the game. They showed a bunch of other, like, generic stuff. I mean, I mean I'm not even joking. People were making jokes guessing what these games were because of how formulatic these games are. Like, all these games, like, there's, like, there's all these shitty generic crafting zombie survival games there. Um, there's a bunch of other boring AAA games that have been done a million times before. And, yeah. And, and like, the whole trailers, they were just a bunch of long, drawn-out stuff that ha gave you no clue what the game was about, and then afterwards they didn't even show time talking about this game. They're like, okay, here's a trailer. All right, we're done with that. Here's another trailer. Here's another trailer. Here's another trailer. Here's another trailer. And especially with the Sony 3, this was apparent. Nobody was clapping. They were showing some shitty Final Fantasy VR game, and it was like Jeb Bush doing a political speech. Nobody was clapping whatsoever. Nobody was clapping. They're, they're like, oh, here's Final Fantasy Fishing. Who the fuck cares about Final Fantasy Fishing? All I want to do when I play role-playing game is to slay dragons and shit. Not just catch fish all night. I mean, I mean, fuck. And then you had um, other shitty announcements that were just forgettable. I mean, when, I'm wa when I was watching these E3s, I really wanted to fall asleep. But then Bethesda, like... They didn't just show shitty sports games or milk games like Just Dance. Oh, no, no. They went above and beyond, and they talked about paid mods coming back or re-releases of Skyrim yet again. And, um, and that's not the best part, okay? Here's the best part of Bethesda's E3. They were showing off um, uh, games nobody asked for and shit. Yeah, that's what they were doing. Like, look, oh, Elder Scrolls Online stuff. Here's some generic card game. We really ought to show that off. For iPad and stuff. Like, like, who the fuck cares? Gamers don't want that. And then, and then the any games here. You've got some, like, of the hardcore retro gamer type still stuck in 1993 who seem to forget that. Look, look, see? Unix Workstation's dead. Those things are dead. I mean, old, like, um, old Macs, N not the same as they used to be, um, fuck. Amigas, dead. They don't seem to forget that the 90s are gone. They, they don't seem to get that the 90s are gone, that they're over. They're done with. Home computers, gone. So that's the thing. That's the thing. Um, those people, they think any game scene is going to save them. They think any games are going to save everything with generic... 16-bit pixel games. Well, there's two problems with any game right now. And you know, what, you know what the problems are? One, so many of them look like complete shit, especially 3D ones. You've either got mediocre pixel 2D games where in some of them the pixels aren't even the same size, and then you've got shitty 3D games which look basic, like Sega Model 1 level graphics on Xbox Ones and PS4s. I mean, fuck. 
like 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 they won't even have anything beyond flat and go round shaders. They won't even have that. It sucks. And then that's not the and then the other problem with it besides the fact that all these games are the samey shit, it's that if you make a game and and like it gets positive reception, you know what people do? They'll dig through your Twitter profile, find two tweets you made three years ago, and they will destroy your whole they'll try to destroy your whole fucking career based on that. And if you were dumb enough to sign with a publisher without thinking what could possibly go wrong and with like with the whole shit going down in gaming right now if you sign with a publisher next thing you know they're gonna basically like put a metaphorical gun at your head and go on a rant about how you gotta like apologize and cave to these snowflakes who will never amount to nothing who whose only game will be some crappy twine game or whatever, and, and you'll have to apologize for them based on a tweet you might or might not have made three years ago. And there's nothing you can do about it because chances are if you if you stay if you stand your ground, you'll get cucked out of your own game. Kind of sucks, doesn't it? Because that's what happened with E3. That's what happened with E3 this year. I mean, look, look, if anything, it just reminded people about how much of a shit show gaming still is. I'll basically end this video with me making fun of that in typical Gligar fashion. But let's talk about Nintendo. Nintendo is like Apple. It's like their fans have some reflex in the brain where... It's, it's like they act like it's some sort of religion or shit, just like Apple fans, where they can just announce something with a 45-second trailer, and Nintendo fans will be like, Oh, yeah, it's the best thing I've bought. That's what happens with Nintendo. I mean, look, they did that with Metroid Prime 4. 45 seconds. Nothing but a logo. Nintendo fans are, are like, Oh, my God, the best thing ever. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Nintendo's E3, they, they didn't show much besides just maybe saying, oh, oh, we're working on a game, which you're going to see at the next two or three E3s guaranteed, and that's another trend I don't like is showing games at too many E3s in a row. But that's the thing with Nintendo and that now. What's going to happen is you're going to... You're going to... um. There's this game, okay, that they're showing off at E3, and guess what? You're going to go see it at the next few E3s, and by the time it comes out, it might be like that, like Shimgami Tensei X Fire Emblem. You remember that game? Remember when it was, gonna, when it was just a teaser and it was going to be the Shimogami Tensei crossover? And what was it? Anime waifu shit. Fuck, if I wanted that, I'd go play a Compile Heart game, because that's what, that's what those games are. But yeah. But yeah, that, that Nintendo is just like those hipster indie game developers when it comes to being milked. Those people have lots of money to blow, and they'll blow it on shit even if it has no games. They'll just spend all their money on retro-inspired 90s video game so that they can live out their life as a 13-year-old that never quite grew up until they die barely giving, barely amounting to anything in society. And you know, I see people defending Nintendo based on stuff they did 20 years ago. Like I said, the time of the past is over. It's 2017 now. Shit has changed. These companies that were big years and years ago, they're not around anymore. They are not simply not around anymore. The 90s are over. So that's the thing. That's the thing. Anyhow, I mean, yeah, I mean, you've got all these, meanwhile, I've got all these hipsters who don't know out for nothing wanting to shut down any indie game you make if you're not in the click. So, yeah, really, really. But either way, if there's a few things you can learn from the whole, um, the whole, uh, Alas Night saga or whatever, let me tell you the two things you can learn. One, if you're a game developer, don't give in. And two, 
don't sign with a spineless publisher that will bend over the second somebody screeches at them. Would you want to work with somebody who won't defend your ass if if somebody is trying to screw you over, you wouldn't want to work with them. Because that's what could happen. I mean, I've, I've heard of this happening so many times. You'll, you'll work with a company that says that they'll have your back, and then when it's time for them to have they'll, your back, they'll just say, not our problem. It's not like it's their problem when they told you they were going to have your back, because guess what? They don't give a shit about you. And is that what you want for a publisher? Is that who you want to like publish your game with? I mean, it's 2017. You can publish games yourself. Go do that instead of getting fucked over by a publisher who wants control of what you can do with your own game. And how you promote it and whatnot. Anyhow, I'm going to end this with one of those Gligar classics that you love to see on this channel. So, see ya! Hello, Bipedal. I'm here to tell you that that this video game announced at E3 called The Last Night ain't true cyberpunk, okay? It's not true cyberpunk. You know why? Because he's not fighting capitalism. He's not fighting the global capitalist power structure computer god. And instead what he's doing is he's... He's fighting as some evil red-pilled ANCAP dude. Do you know that? That's that stupid man. Fuck white people. I mean, you know what you gotta do? You gotta, like, um, have this game where if it's true cyberpunk, you have to hack into billboards and you have to put on the signs of, um, instead of advertisements for capitalist corporations, you have to put on there a big sign that says, Donald Trump sucks. Haha, <laughs> drum fa. Kovef, uh, Donald Trump is worst Russian puppet ever. And then you gotta also put some stuff about Black Lives Matter, climate change, and all that. Because that's how you resist. That's how you resist capitalism. And, and by the way, that I mentioned that this, that this video is sponsored by Verizon 4G LTE Unlimited Service. And Mountain Dew. And Pepsi. Anyhow, that's what you gotta do. You gotta fight capitalism by putting Donald Trump suck signs on everything. And that's how you fight the globalist uh, corporate uh, capitalist system that's killing millions and millions of people. It's already killed six million so far and it's gonna kill more if you don't replace it with communism. You can't, or I mean, I mean socialism, sorry. You can't tell me that socialism hasn't worked because it just hasn't been tried before. You know, Venezuela and, and those countries, those were not real socialists. Anyways, yeah. The guy who made this game the last night, he's a shitlord. He shouldn't buy his game. You should buy my cyberpunk game and, and, and read my webcomic and donate to my Patreon instead because I need the money because the problem is maintenance for that Mercedes Benz my mom got me is a bit too expensive. Yeah, my parents got me some some good stuff. I'm loaded. I've got the new Apple phone. I've got I've got a Benz. It, it's it's the best car ever. So please hand me money. I need money to uh, make my cyberpunk game because my game's real cyberpunk unlike that guy who's who's too capitalist he's making evil cyberpunk games i mean what what a shit lord please boycott his game and uh and at him on twitter and tell him he's the worst person ever because that that's what we need to do we need to like stop these capitalists